even if it wasn't a problem before it's better to do it this way oh, there we go we got the axe because now there is no way randomness is going to creep into your game and accidentally spawn things in the wrong place. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Castlevania Remake series. Before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters, James Welch, Fuzel CC, Basic Terrazan, Retro Galaxy, Fan Van, Mashinsky, Jet Simon, Olivia Bernier, and Mario Lewis, and Mark Gates, Matt, and Seth Cobble for supporting my game dev journey. Also, if you'd like to take part in January's game dev knockout elimination tournament, there is a link in the description. Head on over to the itch page, I've made a video, it's based over 10 rounds. Each round will be eliminating devs with the lowest scores and at the end of the competition give away one of these game dev knockout t-shirts. For more details head on over to itch and take part. It's open to the first hundred people that join and after that the competition will close and we'll go through the elimination rounds. So let's take a look at what we've got going on so far. We've got the whip animation, we can throw daggers in all positions. We do have a small bug um, I don't know if you've noticed it on your own games, but we will be addressing it today. If we attack, if we attack in the crouch position and then let go of all the keys, we can't move left and right until we jump or attack again. So we're going to fix that today. We're also going to add in some pickups that will drop out of these candles that will enable us to change our weapon, our secondary weapon, as we go through the level. So if we look at the player, Attack 2 is the crouch animation. So if we try and find that in our event sheet here, on animation finished attack 2, we've got set state to crouch. Let's change that to idle. And there we go. It, we only remain crouched if I continue to hold down S, but if I crouch attack and let go we go back up to standing which is exactly what we need to do we need to add in these pickups now when i do pickups i don't like to drop the the same sprite i like to create a copy of it so let's go ahead down to the axe and right click and clone object type just pop it next to it and i'm going to call this one axe pickup and then in terms of its behaviors it's not going to need anything Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and right click on the dagger and I'm going to clone it and I'm going to call this one dagger pickup <clears throat> and again it's not going to have any behaviors because it doesn't need them now if we go back to the heart animation we have got the platform behavior on it which enables it to fall to the ground so let's go ahead and pop those on the pickups make sure you disable default controls and we're also going to add destroy outside of layout so that these two will automatically destroy themselves when the game loads and they won't just fall for infinity. There, now we can spawn them in. So if we go back to our event sheet where we've got pickups. Uh, mm, here we go. If we go to the function events where we've got heart spawner, I think we can use this same function and we can add in some variables that will detect which, um, which item to drop. So let's hit B on the keyboard and create a sub event under heart spawner. I'm going to change the name of it oh, to item spawner because now it's going to be used for more than one thing. Um, and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a global variable that will control what item we need to spawn. So let's add a global variable. We can add it to the function events, or if you prefer to keep everything nice and neat, we can add it. In fact, let's just keep it nice and neat. Let's add it to the player events. Right click, add a global variable, and I'm going to call this one random item 
number. And I'm going to make it, uh, let's keep it a number because we've called it number. Uh, default to zero and that's absolutely fine. Now, when we call the item spawner number, let's just take these two lines and just drop them down into that sub event. First thing we're going to do when we call the item spawner is we're going to set the value of the random item number to choose. And this is going to ask the system to make a choice for us. And I'm going to say one, two or three because we've got three items at the moment that we can pick up, which are the heart, the dagger or the axe. Now, in the sub event now, we can double click and we can go to system and we can then compare that and see if it's equal to one. Then I'm going to copy and paste it twice more. And I'm going to change this one to two. I'm going to change this one to three. <clears throat> and I'm going to delete the lines of code in there. Now, if the random number generator selects two, then I'm going to add in, uh, I'm going to go system and I'm going to create object like we did with the heart, but this one is going to be the axe pickup. And I'm going to create it on the exact same conditions as there were before. So the layer is going to be objects and the X position is going to be candles dot X and candles dot Y. And I'm going to copy that line down into num into the number three and I'm going to double click. And I'm going to change axe pickup to dagger pickup. Now, there's an axe, there's a heart, there's an axe, we'll refresh it, dagger, uh, sorry, axe, there we go, dagger and heart. So it's completely random now which item it drops. However, I do want the heart to drop much more frequently than the axe and the dagger. So I'm going to create some more numbers that the random number generator can choose. So I'm going to say four, five, and six. Now I'm going to change this one to say if it is equal, uh, greater or equal to three. I'm going to drag that one to the bottom. I'm going to drag this one to the top and now this one is going to spawn on number one. So if it's one, it's going to be the dagger. If it's two, it's going to be the axe. And then if it's three or higher, it's going to be the heart. So it gives it much more chance now to spawn in a heart. See so a heart one. Oh, there's an axe and a heart. So we're going to get more hearts than we are anything else. We need to add in some events that allow us to pick up these weapons and change our HUD um, box up here. So let's double click into the HUD box and we're going to have to create another frame. So we can just duplicate frame zero. And in this frame, we're going to need to redraw the axe. So I think I'm going to draw it sideways. Just because it, it will then just fit. <clears throat> It'll fit better into the box. Um, there, I'm going to go a little bit of shading on the handle there. Now, when we've got more than one frame, make sure you set the animation speed to zero or it will just play. Now it's defaulting to zero, which is fine because we're going to start with the dagger. Now let's go back to the pickups group in our player events. And we're going to add another event and we're going to say, in fact, we can just copy. <clears throat> we can copy this line here. So player base on collision. And this time it's going to be with the axe pickup. And I'm going to copy and paste that again and change it to the dagger pickup. Now I'm going to add an action and I'm going to say axe pickup destroy because we only want that to be relevant once. And when we pick it up, it needs to disappear. And the same with the dagger. And then we're going to need to change our weapon global variable. So we're going to add an action down here. We're going to go system and we're going to say set value of weapon to axe. Then I'm going to copy that down and I'm going to say dagger and now that should all it that's all it should take now um because <clears throat> we're going to default with the dagger which is fine hopefully i can get an axe in one of these there we go an axe um okay 
yeah, it's changed it, but the, we need to change the HUD element. So let's go into setup. Nope. Where did we put our HUD? Do we have... Um, okay, we don't have a group there. So let's create the group. Add group. And we're going to just call this one HUD. I'm going to pop this one at the top underneath the setup. Now I'm going to add an event to HUD and I'm going to go system and I'm going to say every tick. And I'm going to say system and I'm going to note. I'm going to add a sub event under every tick and I'm going to say system compare variable of weapon. Weapon is equal to dagger. And then I'm going to copy that and paste it again. And this one is going to say axe. And then on add action, I'm going to go to the HUD item and I'm going to set the frame to zero. I'm going to drag that down and set the frame to one. And that should be enough to change it. There we go. And now we've changed our axe. Now we need the axis to destroy the candles. And now I think it's probably worth adding our first family because the dagger and the axe are going to have very, very similar properties. So instead of typing out the same events for each, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a family and then I'm going to give that family the event. So go over to the project window and just right click on families, add a family. And we're going to find the axe, not the pickup, just the axe and the same for the dagger. I'm going to add those and I'm going to call the family weapons now i can go back to my destructibles here and i can say instead of saying dagger on collision with block i can say weapons so any of the weapons on collision with block and the same with dagger here i can go back and i can say weapons on collision with candles and that should be enough now to oh there we go perfect there we go but we also need to destroy the axe once it hits something um, so we've got this line here that says dagger destroy just copy and paste that go back and just say axe destroy so there we go weapons fall out of the candles if we pick one up we change the weapon so now let's put a few more candles in here so there's a lot more things in fact let's just change the snap to grid to four by four A pop a row of candles in here so there's a lot of things that we can collect there we go right let's test that out okay now but now we have this issue because i've added in more candles these are fine but for some reason these items are spawning out of the original candle this might not be happening in your game but it's possible that it could happen depending on are just random factors really because we've specified that these items spawn from the candles we haven't specified which candles so we need to do that um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a perimeter to the item spawner which will then be passed which will tell us which candle it's hitting so if we right click on the function and add a perimeter i'm going to call this one candle id and it's going to be a number now, whenever we call this function, we have to pass in that perimeter now. So when we go back to here in the item spawner, you can see it's in here as well. It's got a little zero after the candle ID, and that's because we haven't specified anything. So let's double click in this. And what we want to do is we want to pass in the ID of the candle that we are making contact with. So we say candles dot uid which is the unique id of that specific candle and we can do the same thing down here candles dot unique id so now that when the item uh, spawner is called and we're colliding with this candle it's going to only be relevant to that specific candle that we've hit so now let's add a sub event underneath that and we're going to double click and we're going to say candles and we're going to choose 
or pick by unique ID. And that is going to be that candles ID perimeter that we just specified. And now we can drag these three underneath it. So now that's only going to be relevant, this candle here, the candles X and Y position on the objects layer, to this individual candle ID. There we go. And now, even if it wasn't a problem before, it's better to do it this way. There we go, we got the axe. Because now there is no way randomness is going to creep into your game and accidentally spawn things in the wrong place. And there we go. Uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, we're going to continue with this series at a little bit faster of a pace uh, if I can keep up with the videos. So if you're enjoying the video and you want me to continue making these and you want me to continue making future series, then please do click the like thumbs up button on the video because it helps YouTube show the video to more people. And as always, until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.